Hello and welcome to episode two of the Corgan Samson Microcast podcast. My name is Adam Whittle. And I'm joined this evening by Andy Pullen. How are you, sir? I'm very good. And Luke Edwards. Hello. The demigod. That's me. <laughs> Here he is again. He survived. I'm back. He's back. So here we are, episode two. Wow. Thank you very much for everybody who's retweeted us, followed us on Twitter. Don't forget you can follow us at, at Microcast on Twitter. So please follow us, retweet us, tweet us, tell us things. We like to listen. Tell your friends about tell us. Tell your friends about us. Absolutely. So let's let's crack on. So first product really to talk about this month is the brand new DK seven hundred series Samson microphones. So these are brand new. So these are drum mics, right? These are drum mics. Well done. Do you want to tell us about them, Luke? No, you can tell us. Oh, brilliant. Thanks for that. So basically there's three different <laughs> there's three different um, sets of microphones for drums. So these come in a kit. So we start with the DK703. This is a three-piece drum mic kit. Uh, it comes with three Q72 instrument mics. Uh, and the good thing is, is about these, these kits is that they come with everything. So normally, I don't know if you've ever sold bought drum mics before, but they normally just get the mics and you've got to buy everything else or whatever. But they come with a case, first and foremost, but they come with the adapters and rim clips, which is pretty cool. Because you know, that to, is useful, yeah. Yeah, we well, need them, obviously. Rim clips Clip to your rims. The, these like. ones are quite adaptable as well, so you can actually you can get the uh, the mics into whatever position you want. You can even clip underneath if you want to get oh, a right, cool. different. So if you're running on a snare, for example. Right, cool. Well, that's the first one. That's the DK seven or three. So that's the three piece uh, kit. <laughs> then we obviously move up to the DK seven or five, which you've guessed it. It's a five piece. So this <laughs> time the difference is it comes with four Q seventy two instrument mics with the clips. Uh, and it comes with a Q71 kick drum mic as well. Again, comes with a hard case. And we've not finished there. There's one more. There's not. There is. Wow. It's called a DK707. Seven, seven. Uh, seven piece drum mic kit. So this time it comes with the Q71 drum mic with the, uh, with the, with the swivel style mic adapter. It comes with four Q72 instrument mics with swivel style mic adapters and the mounted clips. And then the difference with this pack is it has a 2C or 2, which we know very well, a pencil condenser mic with, again, with a shivel, uh, swivel mic clip thingies. And and the, it doesn't come with a shivel, just to clarify. There is no <laughs> shivel in this. <laughs> right, yeah, the, we'll, edit, we'll edit that out. Yeah, yeah, we'll leave that. Yeah, that's, that that's yeah. So, yeah, brilliant. Yeah, so that so that's completes that. Those, those are available now. Uh, these have been a long time coming. Um, we've been waiting for these for number of months now and these are now here and they are live they are out there search them out go and buy them it's nice just to have a complete set isn't it in a in a box and everything yeah just a great solution yeah absolutely yeah, again so from samson that's the um the first thing the next thing i, I want to uh, move on to <clears throat> excuse me is the obviously it's the edinburgh fringe probably by the time you're hearing this podcast it'll be in full swing it's all happening. They'll be rocking it. They'll be rocking it. But we've got some Samson presents. Did you know that? No. You did really, don't lie. So <laughs> we've got um, <clears throat> a, bo- a beatboxer by the name of MC Zaney, who's part of the Beatbox Collective. So he's going to be doing some beatboxing. Now, he's on August the 14th um, up in Edinburgh. He's at the Gilded Ballon, which is at the Edinburgh Museum. That's on August the 14th. Which is pretty cool. Pretty cool. Now, so, the gear he's using is, first of all, he's using a very popular Q8 microphone, which I'm sure we're all familiar with. Uh, it's a fantastic microphone, but guess what product he's using it with? Tension. Stageman 80. No. No. A good, a good call, though, but no, he's using the XP106 which is obviously the product that we talked about last week. Ah, uh, yes, the fan favourite. There you go. I knew Andy, he loves the Can't XP 106. No, you love a bit of that. So, yeah, so so that's really cool. So check that out. That's MC Zaney from the Beatbox Collective, August the 14th at the Gilded Ballon, which is at the Edinburgh Museum. So, yeah, so that's pretty cool. So we've got drum mics and a beatboxer. 
It's all happening. It's, like, it's almost a theme, isn't it's, it? Yeah, it's like one of them guys that stands on a road with a, all the drums strapped to him. And he, the one-man symbol, band. That's the one, you know. We and like you, it. you can do some beatboxing, can't you? Uh, yes, I can. Siri can. Have you know, I had yeah. Siri do it. Siri. So go on. Yeah, you come on. You must have heard that. You know, it was all thing a couple of months ago. Where you hang on, let me see if it might not work. You might not even hear this, but so, so did you discover this by yourself? Were you were you at home alone looking Listen, for something to no, do? No, it was or? on the. It was everywhere. It was on Facebook and all that things Siri can do, and everyone. What's was Facebook? <laughs> Very good. No, <laughs> no, but you not remember that. Um, what does the fox say, or whatever? And then Siri. Had, Say it or sing it, or whatever. But there's a beat. Yeah, hang he's, on, he's, if, he's off on one of his no, tangents no, no. again. We'll yeah, try and reel this in. No, let's, okay. let's see if it works. Okay. Hi Siri, can you beatbox for me, please? Here's one. I've been practicing boots and cats and boots and cats and boots and cats and boots and cats and boots. I could do this all day. Cats yeah, yeah. Well, yeah. Do, yeah. All right. Whoa, 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 whoa. Cats and boots and cats and boots. guy loves a bit of beatboxing, does Siri. Thank you, Siri. That's that's cool. So, yeah, so there you go. I did not know See, that. You go, now you're all going to try that now. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. I'm mesmerised by that. Yeah. If, so if we go. all do that at the same time, we could really thicken the sound no, up and have like a yeah. chorus effect. But yeah, yeah, but I bet one of us has got like a If you did it in time, you could create like a round, yeah. couldn't you? Yeah. You'd get some could nice that, cross rhythms going. Yeah. That'd be cool. Yeah. Yeah. Maybe not for this right now. Maybe that would be a little bit too low. But yeah, yeah we could, I think we'll, we'll, we'll do that for the next one. The Beetle Drive <laughs> last yeah. month. Yeah, I did suggest doing a live Beetle. We could be doing it now. You know, you could be as we're doing this. You could be rolling, thinking, oh, damn, I've got four. Damn, I've got. Oh, I've got head. Yeah, but we're not doing it. You wouldn't let me. So probably best. So there you go. So yeah. So moving on. Um, I think Andy, do you want to tell us about? Obviously, you can tell straight away with the. Uh, sound it sounds completely different um obviously last month it was a kind of a let's just get in a room and try it out try it out you know obviously it's been approved bit of money's been thrown at it <laughs> pulling out all the stops garrow has been in his cupboard and dug us out some samsung products so we're using some um mics which andy will tell us about and we're using the mb1 mini boom stand which i've tweeted a picture out so you can check those out so andy do you want to tell us about the uh Microphones. The microphones. Well, the microphones we are using are the Samson MTR201s. They've been around for a little while now, and they're a recording mic from anything from vocals, from acoustic guitar, would work really well as a room mic as well. Um, you've got a one-inch gold sputtered diaphragm. Um, essentially, that just Everyone means the needs a sputtered that. diaphragm. What, yeah, that's, <laughs> what that is a very good question, and we can probably Wikipedia that and come in the second half and, you know, yeah. maybe slow down a bit and do your, that. Uh, we'll yeah. get back to you. Um, but yes, it, it's just a very smooth sound. Uh, the SPLs that it can handle is up to 132 dB, which will handle anything from sort of whispering up to even Adam's voice. It can handle the... What's the problem with the my voice? Well, we had to adjust the levels like, earlier there, didn't we? We'll we did, yeah. Again. we've Yes, Adam's levels are Listen. substantially lower than us. Um, but it comes with a project, uh, dear boy. <laughs> it comes you. with a pop shield. It comes uh, with a shock mount that it's in, and it also comes in a flight case as well. And hopefully, as you can hear, the quality is very, very good. Um, but these are available now, and it's worth getting to your local dealer see if you can actually check them out and maybe try them out against some well, of the, uh, the again. Other I think pieces. you know, going back to the um, drum mics that we've spoken about, and obviously going back to last month's podcast where Andy gave us the Samson story, which was cool. It's all about solutions. I like the use packs because it's a pack. So you get everything in a box, you open it up, and there's a little bit you go. Saying about solutions, the going back to the drum mics ever so slightly, the kick drum mic works unbelievably well uh, to record bass guitars. If you actually want to mic up a oh, right. bass amp. Really? Yeah, we did that for, a, for some band recording we did, and we used the Samson kit, used the CO2s with the overheads, and we stuck the bass drum mic literally into the sound port of a... Uh, of a bass amp and rather than just getting a kind of a, a clean di in you actually get the sound of the amp which is you don't normally get bass guitars don't normally get the privilege of actually hearing their own amplifier so no. another little solution mm. there as an you option. Go. Here we go. so yeah so yeah check those out so yeah a whole new sound for uh, this month and a whole again, new sound moving so, forward. so we were going to use the he samsung headphones as well weren't we but we've lost them because Andy's not found them yet. Yeah. From Andy. last month. So. Just, just to reiterate, it wasn't Andy. Okay. <laughs> yes, it was. wasn't Andy. Don't lie. You won't I get left the day before. You won't get into you've trouble. You've got them. We know you've probably, got them. I, I hope it, Gareth's not listening to this. No, I think it was Gareth. But anyway, Gareth and Ian sadly can't be with us this evening. Um, simply because we're not in the Korg dungeon this time. Yeah. We're actually in Newcastle. Have you ever been out 
doing some uh, stuff in Newcastle today, so unfortunately they won't be with us this evening, so it's very sad. Enjoyed yes. being uh, them joining us last month. But next month, we're hoping to do it live. Well, not live, live, but do it kind of live at BPM, because we're going to be at BPM next month. It's going to be cool. It's going yeah, to be cool. so that's something that we're going to talk about later, because we're doing something at BPM, which is pretty cool, but other than that, We'll probably have Gareth and uh, Ian back with us next month at BPM. So, yeah, check out that. So, we move on. Korg, Luke, new product. Loads of new product. Uh, well, there's, first of all, a couple of products that we didn't mention last month, uh, which was the Nano uh, Studio stuff. So, we start yes. off with the... Um, I've seen these. These are great. Um, the Nano Keys hasn't come out yet or it might it depends when you listen it's to the podcast but it's released, any, any day yeah, it's been released had it yet. but it's not out there in the wild as it were yet the but the uh the nano control is so shall we start with the nano control studio yes so tell us all about that Nano control studio um it's uh another addition to our nano range but now this is like a a kind of a pro version if you like because it has it's bigger it's got more controllers on it so like the faders have a longer throw so it just feels a bit more uh, kind of satisfying to use. Uh, it's got more controllers on it, as I said. Uh, but the big thing with these is that they're Bluetooth. So cool. you can, if you're doing your mix, you can just literally walk around the room. Um, you can kind of go and chill on the sofa if that's what you're into. Whatever you want to do, you can go and take them anywhere, basically. So That's awesome. Yeah, that, I really like that. That can approach. be a really good tool rather than being stuck in front of a screen, actually moving away and using your ears rather than your eyes, which can be... Uh... That's right, because as we all know, it can be quite fatiguing doing hours in front of a computer um and yeah it just kind of can relax you a bit i guess so that, that's got yeah to be so a good that, thing. that's the control and the new one well they're both new but the one that's due any day now is the nano keys studio yeah so that one again bluetooth so you've got all the advantages there um plus you've got the keyboard and some pads on it so it's kind of like a hybrid of the nano key and the nano pad yeah, yeah, because obviously we do the nano, the original nano stuff. So we did like a nano keys, nano control, and nano pad, uh, and this is an extension of that, the studio range. So if it's Bluetooth, does, will that work with iOS devices and things it like that as well? That's brilliant. Yeah. You can use it with obviously a Mac, PC if it's got Bluetooth, um, laptop, and also iOS as well. Fantastic. So, yeah. And don't forget, you can use it with gadgets gadget which we spoke about last we did we did a great and all that we yeah. can do um get on your uh, ipad and create some uh, tunes and uh, i think it was ian saying about the guy who did six pack sam um he's used product similar to this which is our micro key air keyboards not er as i say it's uh, difficult word yeah, i tell you uh, what throw these difficult words at me it's a tricky one i'm not going to change i'm just going to just micro key air just be yourself yeah be myself yeah. you know we so, can translate for you it's not a problem you. that's air you if it ever it? goes we've got a video version we can always mm. put subtitles on as well so it'll be fine yeah be fine mm. so yeah so um those are available well, the controllers are said available now the keys any day so check out those uh and yes. the big big Book announcement for the month are uh, what Luke, can you remember? Come on, you program some of the patches. Oh, yeah, for sorry, them. that one. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you did yeah. the patterns for them, so. not all of them, but I did some. <laughs> yeah, uh, the Electribes, yes. Mm. So, yes, everyone's going now. Mm. Obviously, I've seen this, but you know, well, you tell us what they are, Luke. Tell us why, why they're different. Well, the new ones. Yeah, well, they're, they're not. Well, they are new, but they're kind of not, are they? So, do you want to maybe explain? Because there might be people at home now who've just bought one and gone, oh, I've been swizzed. That's but obviously, yeah. it's, it's just, you know, just. But there's some good news there as well. Yes, exactly. So, so let's. Um, basically, the, this is an update, if you like, of the new Electribe. So, the new ones that launched a while ago, the ESX2 and the yep. EMX2. Mm -hmm. And they were um, black and grey, yep. respectively. Cool. Um, so with the new ones, we've changed the color scheme back to the original Electribe colors, which is blue and red. So blue for the synth one, red for the sampler. So and <clears throat> some of the controls have been changed as well. The, the coloring of them to make it a little bit easier to navigate. Yeah, but um, you've got new features, haven't you? New features as well. Quite a lot of new features. Um, there's a song mode, I think now, so you can chain patterns together, which mm -hmm. is a, a big ask. And a few other extra things where that users have asked for, we've implemented. 
and a whole new um, bunch of patterns as well. Awesome. And the great news is anybody that's got, let's say, the version one of the of the new Electribes, the black and the grey ones, get all this for free. They do, yeah. It will be available as a free download, all so these new patterns. So that's amazing. So if so the only difference one, then is just the colour, isn't it? Red and exactly, blue, yeah, and they're out, the is it September, October? September time of blue. So yeah, so yeah. check those so, out. So which one's your favourite, red or blue? Ooh, I'd have to say blue, I think. I have to agree. Oh, I think, I, I'm, Adam, you know, don't you know, correct me if I'm wrong, but isn't it down to really what kind of music you're into? Because I, I, from what I've read, the, the ESX one, the sampler one, is massive in America, but in Europe... The EMX one or two, as it now is, is um, more popular because obviously in America hip hop's a big thing, so obviously you need a lot of samples and that kind of thing. That's true, yeah. I mean, especially with the original Elect Tribes, the blue ones, so the the synth version, if you like, that one outsold the red quite substantially. Yeah, yeah. But with the new one, actually, it's been a lot closer. Yeah. So See, for me, I got even, I I remember because. When I first started selling them, they were like original, original ones. Remember past, before that? So you had like e the e red was the drum and one, things like e that, wasn't it? Yeah. 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 Like and then you had the EMX one, was it? The black one, that was my favourite. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Music production one. And then you had a, you had, see, then you had a green one. Yeah. What was the green the one? The green one was, the, it was kind of a bit of both. It was almost like a, not a workstation version, but it had it sampling yeah, and it blue, had a bit of a Blue, hybrid. red, yeah. green and black were yeah. the originals, weren't they? Yeah. I know the ER1 was used heavily in the Prodigy album Fat, Fat of the Land. Land that's yeah. right. Yeah, he, he did a load with that, yeah. He did um, a lot of live stuff with it, if I remember rightly. They did yeah. a lot of, um, the when they did the tours and stuff, they, they played with them live. It was uh, ER1s and Microcorgs, were, I'm sure, amongst a, a load I'm, of other I'm things Googling. as well. I'm Googling. You're Googling gonna it live? Because it's going to do my it, editing. It's happening Prodigy, right now. Prodigy, big chord fans, yeah, definitely. Um, oh, here we go. Oh, I just saw a picture of it then. Talk amongst yourselves. Keep, keep talking. We'll put some hold music. What, what on. have you? What have you? Um, what patterns have you done, Luke? Tell us about some of the patterns you've done. I've done a few. You did promise me you were going to do some. Um, you were going to do me an afterburner one and a <laughs> and an altered beast one, but you've let me down. Is that right? I did submit that. Can you apologise now, got rejected, live, to our millions of viewers, <laughs> listeners? Not. I'm very sorry. Thank you. Um. Yeah, uh, green was a sampler. It was the sampler. Yeah, green was right. the sampler, red was the drum, blue was the, the synthy one, and then you had black was like music production. So red is the new green. See, now you're confusing it. Now you're confusing it. <laughs> but yeah, so that, yeah, so an immensely popular range, yeah. Electribes. And a massive follow, so like yeah. cult following oh, out there It as well, really yeah. has. I mean, there's yeah. some great forums to join. Um, to find out all about these amazing products, and it's a real family with these, like the much like the Volkers, I guess. The Volkers have got a similar thing, definitely, yeah. Um, so you can check those out. They'll be due September time. Uh, so just to, to recap, there's the EMX2 uh, BL, which is obviously the blue one, ESX2, the sampler one, ID red, nice and easy, and they sound immense. Yeah. And you can also link your Volkers directly to them, and they sync, don't they? Yeah, you got sync in and out, so you can sync them up very easily. Obviously, you've got MIDI as well. I so think the thing is, I mean, let's you know, let there's a few products now that we do that can link up. So shall we maybe chat about that? What what products link up that we do now? What what's the longest chain of cork gear you could we can oh, put together see, using sync? Isn't it? Honestly, just before we go on to that, I've seen some awesome videos online this month like as obviously if you follow me on twitter uh, at um, adam cord uk i've uh, retweeted a lot of it so if you do a cool video i generally find it and i'll retweet it but there's like some mega like one guy had um is it four volker bases chained together oh yeah you should but the sega rally was yeah, yeah yeah linked to like a game boy, game boy yeah <laughs> and he was like oh it's just amazing it's like what is this it's have you amazing. have you seen the 16 volker yeah, keys seen that one that's cool that's yeah, amazing that's good as well yeah so yeah so so obviously we can link the volkers because we've talked about that we can sync them up with the patch cables and then obviously you've got what else can we do ms20 mini? ms20 yes yeah. 20 mini you can odyssey yes you can uh, mini log, the, mini, log. The mini log, mini yeah. log. You can monotribe although it's discontinued you, still, you can still connect yeah that. if you've got a monotribe you can do that um, and the obviously, obviously. Electribes. Electribes. So it's like the majority now of our catalogue, if you will, can be all synced together. That's pretty cool. 
it's a nice thing that you can start with a Volker and eventually just build up your collection until yeah, you have so, this one big I mean, sinkable monster. Yeah, that's the thing. So let, let me, let's just break that down. So, Mr. Joe Public, what does it mean when you can link your Volkers together? Or whatever, you know. No no offence to anyone who sounds like that. <laughs> <laughs> no, I'm just saying, so you, Mr. Joe Public, why would you want to link your products together? Because you could maybe... You know, I'm going back to keyboard days and stuff. You could link keyboards together and you could make one keyboard sound like the other and all that. But when you're just syncing them, that's the tempo, isn't it? Is that right? It is, yeah. yeah, yeah. It so syncs what, the tempo. So it means that when you're making your music, you make your drum loop on your vocal beats and then you make your bass line in your vocal bass, sync them together and they'll play at the same tempo. And then obviously whatever's at the start of the chain then is your master. Yeah, and then they're all slave to that, daisy chained. Cool. This is this is a question I actually don't know the answer to. Something like the, the mini log would it sync things like the LFO speeds and yes, it, as long as you set it in the menu, okay, to be BPM, the LFO sync to BPM, then it will. Yes. Yeah, I think okay. it, if you think yeah. about anything that would be syncable, will sync. That's yeah. right. Like effects or like you were saying about, or well, we've got drums or yeah. So anything that that you can imagine will be syncable you can anything tempo based generally yeah, yeah we'll you sync, can do it yeah. Korg more syncable than a Titanic <laughs> uh, there you go that's there free go. we'll get rid of that yeah, we'll maybe pick that out yeah. Yeah. yeah it's embarrassing yeah don't I was going to say suggest that one to Ian but no, maybe not <laughs> no we'll leave that <laughs> um, so yeah so that kind of wraps up uh, new gear so actually in a quiet month we have an awful lot to talk about I think very good yeah, you thought you didn't sound impressed with that then. <laughs> that wasn't enthusiastic. I want a new Kronos. You want a new Kronos? Yeah. Why? What's wrong with the one that you've got? Nothing's wrong with it. It's just I want it's a new one. What you mean, one that's not scratched? Exactly. Not not a new because obviously the old one. I say the old one. It's only been out a year. <laughs> um, are you on platinum or are you on a standard? I'm on a standard because if you were lucky enough, um, we. Uh, and that's something we never mentioned. Well, I guess because they've all gone, but obviously it was in episode so limited, one, wasn't it? So it was very, very. We did a very limited run of platinum Kronos. I would Kronoses. have absolutely Kroni. What would you call it? Kroni. Kroni. It's got it. Kroni. A gaggle of Kroni. <laughs> yeah, it's a bit <laughs> Alan Partridge, isn't it? Uh, Fetch the Kroni. Lexi. <laughs> <laughs> the um, the platinum Kronos is in exactly the same colours as the Triton, and yeah, I have I have the Triton Classic, the original Triton. In fact, I got the Triton on the day that yeah. I went to go and buy a Trinity, so I ended up with a Triton. Yeah, I'm all for that, day, but, but oh, come on. Good. I think the black one looks the best. Black one, it's wooden very panels, sleek. Like it's it. all it's about the wood. We, said, we discussed this last month. Yep. Um, but for me, I love the original, but was it 150 we had, I think? 50. Oh, that's 50 right. 50 into the UK. It was literally 50. So limited. So, so I, I mean, I don't, there might be some still out there in the wild. People still may be selling them. Um, so maybe just check them out, but that's the platinum... Kronos or Kroni. Which was, it was exactly Wax the same, eye. wasn't it? I'm right. It was, yeah, just, yeah. It was no just difference. And it was only the 88. There was no other yep. sizes. Just the 88, and it's in a, a beautiful platinum finish. So shiny. And if anyone listening out there has got one, you're very lucky. Yeah, because they are pretty cool. And I think we should maybe look, you know, do a bit on uh, Kronos. We should. Uh, I mean, we did. Let's be honest. We did speak about it for to do this time, but. We've not really got the time, I don't think, because I think what we need is maybe a quiet month. Is maybe go through. Um, I mean, in a nutshell, how many engines does it have? It has nine engines. Nine engines. That's more than a plane. <laughs> it is. <laughs> <yeah>. <laughs> so yeah, nine engines, and I think it'd be pretty cool to talk about um, what each one does. I mean, look, well, we won't go into much, too much de- detail now, but give us a brief overview of what they are. Well, you've got your nine engines, so they're kind of like, if you like, plugins or software synths on a computer. Mm-hmm. Um, so you've got dedicated engines for specific tasks. So you've got a piano engine, electric piano engine, organ, and then you've got several different synth ones, yeah, some yeah. of which are our classic synths, like the MS-20, Poly-6, Wave Station, and stuff like that. Yeah, so, so I think we'll... Yeah. we'll, we'll, we'll I think we'll... Um, cause it's I mean, far I, too big I a think, subject to just... Yeah, you know, I, I think Korg themselves if you check out their twitter feed um we've been tweeting quite a lot recently about each of the different one i think it's one a month or one a week we've been doing yeah so i think we, we maybe do one of the podcasts where we really crank up the chronos chat i, th- I think crank we may it. have to get luke playing one as oh, well yeah. i think that it's, oh, yeah, it's just right, what you need to that. do it. everybody needs Together. to just pause the podcast there you go everyone paused it right cool what you need to do now <laughs> 
it's, you need, it's, to, go you need to play it again so yeah, you can hear us talking. Play again. Yeah. <laughs> but you need to go. You need to go on Google and go um, Luke Edwards Rocky and check out Luke playing Rocky. Luke Edwards Pirates of the Caribbean, yeah, particular favourite of mine. Or uh, Luke Edwards um, Robin Hood, Prince of Thieves. That's another that's good another one. classic. Yeah. Now I've heard something today, Andy, that you've not heard yet. Really? Mm. I've had an exclusive. It was an today. exclusive. Well, now, yeah, now I know who the favourite is. That's I fine. I still think we should have done, but maybe it's not need, ready yet. It's not ready yet. Man of Steel. Uh, okay. No, I have. Okay. No, I haven't heard that. No, you are the first. That's right. Yeah. Yeah. So that's I'd, pretty cool. I'd heard that before, everyone. <laughs> had you? Yeah. Right. Okay. Yeah. But not the proper version. Right. Yeah. Not the. Not the. No. 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 Oh, All right. <laughs> <laughs> So yeah, we'll so yeah, I think we need to. Uh, no, it, it's you know, just be honest. It's it's an amazing synth. It's our top of the range um, workstation that we do. Very new. It's a year, just over a year old now. It's our flagship model, and I think we need to maybe tell everybody out there what it does. Yes. Yeah. So we'll do that in another episode. Right. Well, I think that's it for part one. Okay. Shall we go and have a get kettle on, have a brew? Let's get kettle on. Get kettle on. Have a brew. Have a, Have a brew, lad. Welcome back to part two of the Korg and Samson Microcast podcast. Here we are. Greetings. Greetings. After a light refreshment. In fact, we never had a brew. No, <laughs> never no. I forced it to have a brew and I've got some water. Exactly. I demand we pause it. It's half the brew. Make me a brew. I'll do that in part two. We're going to have a part three. We'll we have a part, part three just so we can have a brew. So, part two. Um... Let's discuss some video content that we've got on the Korg and Samson websites. Uh, now, we're going to give you an exclusive tonight, because um, Luke's been doing some filming. Is that right, Luke? I have. Yeah. Um, well, I've been helping. What do you mean you've been you, do you mean you've been helping? We had a very special guest into Korg Towers a couple of weeks ago. And who and was the special it, guest? It Michael was. Jackson? No, it wasn't. Oh. That would be quite challenging, wouldn't it? Yeah, That's obviously. Nice. Eric Bristow? No. Mario. Was it Mario? No, it wasn't Mario. No. Now, people that haven't listened to episode <laughs> one will be thinking, what's going on? But yeah. They're all references. They're all references to the, first, to the first very podcast. first podcast. And now you're intrigued. Listen how do we, in one. fact, how do we find this podcast? Well, obviously you listen to it so you'll know, but you are on iTunes. iTunes, yeah. Pod what if you've got, well. what if you, what if you like Joe Public and you've, you know, you've got an Android phone, how would you do it then? Get an iPhone. <laughs> <laughs> we're on what well, yeah you'll find us just we're on twitter any, any podcast app yes. you can just search you for can microcast. search for microcast you'll, find, you'll it. find it um and obviously on twitter at microcast spelled with a k so m-i-c-r-o-k-a-s-t so anyway sorry back to video so what, yeah. what was the special guest so the special guest was ian burden oh cool from the human league indeed um and he was telling us some nice stories about how he Go into the music business, and you'll see all these videos when they come out. There's actually going to be three because we've got so much material, it was great. So, we're going to kind of oh, um, brilliant. cut it down. But interestingly, he was actually using as well the, the Korg Mini 700, which we were talking about last week. Oh, cool! So, that was part of our chronology from episode one. It was. Was that, that was his, good. or was that, was that something we've loaned him to? No, we, we had a special loan from one of our well, it's the one that friends. we kind of had a cheeky play on, and we, if you we tweeted some pictures of it for the last month's podcast so that was the one that we did it. and if you remember we were talking about how the filter is the same in the Volker keys mm -hmm. the current Volker keys as in the Mini 700 so we got him to play both side by side and compare them and he's actually oh, got brilliant. he's actually got a Volker keys and he absolutely loves it cool. so he's all over that so yeah it's going to be a neat video that I think Excellent. So when's that? Do you when do you reckon? Apparently in the next couple of weeks it's going to be All the right, first so one anyway. We'll right. So um, how next will we month? find that? Is that easy enough to find? Is it just a, a YouTube search or is it on our, the Korg website? It'll be on the Korg YouTube channel. Yeah. Yeah. If you follow any of us on Twitter or you follow Magcast or Korg, it'll all be tweeted out, I'm sure. Yeah. We'll all be giving it some uh, tweetage. It giving it some tweetage. 
so that's the uh, a video that's to watch out for but obviously some other videos that we've released obviously with the new emx2 and um the new electribes emx2 and the ES esx2 we've got a video that's live now i believe that is live now yeah so check those out obviously another product that we mentioned uh last month new product the plug key and uh, there's a little video for that so um check that out so they're both just official product videos yes like. indeed yeah. uh, another cool video that i've seen is marcus henriksen do you know ah, who yes. he is he's from minilog isn't he he is the band. so the band minilog and do you know what product marcus henriksen of minilog uses kronos nope cross oh. nope triton nope uh, dx7 nope odyssey of course, he uses the Minilog. Oh, the yes, Minilog, of course. Of course. Of course. Because obviously his band's called Minilog. Was his band called Minilog before the Minilog? Well, or? that's probably why he, he, we've given him a Minilog. It was cool. stopping yeah. him from suing us. Exactly. Oh, so is, is, is this like a chicken and egg thing? I don't or know. Is this I, a I don't know what came first. No, I, the, the it, band was, first. it was the band, the band first. first yeah. Actually, with the Minilog as well, I don't, again, something we discussed last week, um, we said about there's that secret game, so if you, put, you move any of the controllers... I actually managed to get one, and I've completed the game. Yeah. And can okay. you believe it? What it actually says it, it reveals the secret to no, the. Uh, don't say. You can't it. say. You can't say. Oh, that's part of the fun, isn't it? Oh, okay. I thought. Okay, that's all right. Fine. Well, if it's you not the biggest spoiler ever, isn't yeah, it? Yeah, you do. Honestly, don't say. If you want to go directly into my Twitter feed, it's uh, it's not on that. La, 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 la. Yeah. <laughs> it's actually yeah. not on. Yeah. <laughs> Okay, um, well, I, I'm, uh, you know, I was going to go there, but that's fine. That's fine. We'll uh, make, maybe next. How do you feel uh, about episode. spoilers? By the way, do you get annoyed? I, I yes, do I do. Yeah, because obviously, me I mean, let's go. So are we talking about yeah, Essex Boys right, cars? Are no, we let's go in, no, let's go into spoilers now because. <laughs> hang on. If anybody doesn't want anything spoil film wise, oh, turn it on. off now. Okay, I'm off. I'll right, see you later. you're off. But you're on your own. These, you know, ages ago. But do you, have you ever had anything spoiled? Yes. Like for me, I remember watching, um, I can't even remember what it was, it was some rubbish TV program um, and it was a chat show thing, I can't even remember what it was, but it was when Sixth Sense had come oh, out. Oh, Sixth Sense was the same one yeah, for me. That was, yeah. And yeah. the guy on TV went, you know that bit, right, when Bruce Willis, right, he's obviously a ghost, yeah, and it was like, oh my God. <laughs> That's the Just whole film ruined, ruined the film for like millions of people. And it's like, <laughs> I thought it was really funny. It's like, you're an idiot. And didn't um, some... And there was some stuff with the latest Star Wars film as well, me? wasn't there? That was, one that was you, me, wasn't yeah. it? Yeah. No, it wasn't me doing the spoiling, but it was me again. I got spoiled because I thought, right, around that time, I, I had a little boy. My little boy was born and it was great. And obviously, it was a mega busy time for us. So, obviously, I wasn't on Facebook or anything like that, just posting the odd picture and stuff. And I thought, right, anything to do with Star Wars, big fan, obviously. I'm not going to read, I'm not going to look at. I go on a lot of like film sites, game sites, and I'm just not going to read any comments about anything. And it was on a Facebook post about breastfeeding. No. No. no seriously, right? And I'm and on, someone had to put so the tube back as a lady on boy, that. Obviously, <laughs> and I want to, you know, find out what, you know, obviously stuff about having a baby and that. And there's a th it was like something about breastfeeding and I was reading comments and some guy was like, whoa, 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 spoiler, spoiler, spoiler. I don't want to spoil it because people still might not have seen it. It was like, you've just like ruined everything. <laughs> I wanted to kill him. That is awful. No, but he, do you know what I mean? It was like, it was just like, why do people do it? Especially on something as huge as Star Wars, which has the ultimate cult following, doesn't it? It's yeah, just, I know. It's huge. You know, we've waited so long for it. So. It's like another one. Obviously, I'm a gamer, as most people know, uh, as you guys are as well. And obviously, a big game for me at the minute is No Man's Sky, which comes out yes. next week. And there's a guy managed; he's paid thirteen hundred pounds, or thirteen hundred dollars, whatever it is, on eBay to buy one. Someone's managed to get a copy early, and it's like one of the biggest kept secrets ever. And he's got it, and he's playing it, and he's started tweeting a lot of stuff about it. And it's just like, why? I don't, I don't get it. Is it for the fifteen minutes of fame? Do you think, or possibly? Yeah, it must be. Yeah. It so, must be. Yeah, yeah some no people good. are just weird, aren't they? Basically. Yeah. So I mean, I, I don't even know how I've got onto this subject. 
I did. Oh, you yeah, said Andy, sp- spoiling it, Andy, you <laughs> idiot. Yeah. Said, he almost did. Yeah. But yeah, when, you, when you said spoilers, obviously being a South End boy myself, I thought you might mean the things that these Wallys stick on the back of their cars to make uh, <laughs> to, go, to go faster. Yeah. Except, uh, and you bet you've got one, haven't you? Well, I had one. I don't yeah. have one anymore. <laughs> what yeah, car was it on? It was on a Vauxhall, Vauxhall Belmont. Nova. No, not, no, I, I, I had the, the longer one. It was the Vauxhall Citroen Belmont Saxo. in faded red, which was actually Vauxhall just orange. Vauxhall Belmont with a spoiler. Oh, wow. But <laughs> oh, wow. well, it, it needed the traction for the 1.3 powerhouse engine that it had. <laughs> Front wheel drive. It made all the difference. Did you drive yeah. around playing sick beats? I did. In fact, that car, I could actually tune my radio into the engine and so I could turn my stereo up and it would... The, the the whole thing would vibrate in the same tone of the engine. Have so you not like seen them thing. things wow. you can buy for your radio? No. And you can buy like so you 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 get like a if your favourite car. What's your favourite car? Belmont, isn't it? No, no. Seriously, your favourite car. If you could have any car, what would it be? Nineteen ninety three Dodge Charger SRT Venom right. Tune. Modern cars in like now available. Available on right now. GTA. Money's no object. You can have any car you want. Oh, I really like the McLaren. The P1 so is a, what you is can a do thing. is you can buy a thing for your car and you put it in your um, cigarette lighter socket thing and it tunes to your radio and it syncs to your car. So you turn up your radio and whenever you rev on your vo- pedal, it makes your car sound like that. That, that is car. what my Belmont did <laughs> years <laughs> ago, like, literally. The old school. On, on, it was on um, FM, so you, if you weren't getting the, um, the shipping report, you were getting your own engine. It was amazing. <laughs> That's brilliant. Yeah. Probably wouldn't need that with the McLaren, to be fair, though, would Probably you? not, no. I'd still rather have the Viper with the McLaren anyway, but that's fine. <laughs> yeah, the one. <laughs> yeah, the one. Yeah. yeah. That's a whole other podcast. Yes. <laughs> anyway. Is, yeah. yeah, so spoilers. We don't like spoilers. Feel free to uh, tweet Andy some spoilers. What's, <laughs> yeah. your, what's your Twitter, Andy? Andy. The spoilers UK. at. <laughs> yeah. Send him some spoilers. Please don't. Because he nearly spoiled it for everyone. But yeah, that's the mini game. <laughs> um, so yeah, check that out. So... Um, well, I don't even know how we got onto that. Oh, Marcus Henriksen, Minilog. Um, so that's a video. It's live now on uh, the Korg YouTube channel. And obviously, referring back to last month's podcast with Mr. John Carpenter himself. Yes. Playing a Kronos, which is pretty cool. And he was telling everybody about his relationship with Korg products over the years, etc. And having a chat about a new album that he's doing. He's doing some live playing. Is he? Now, unfortunately, it's not the They Live soundtrack. Oh. <laughs> Again, referencing last month's podcast, but he was playing The Fog live. It's cool. awesome. So you've got him on a corner. I've seen a video of this. Yeah, that's what yeah. I'm saying. No, yeah. Yeah. yeah, We're in the video sorry. section of the podcast, Luke. <laughs> <laughs> I was just checking my email, sorry. <laughs> yeah, so, yeah, so, um, yeah, check that out. Fog live. Um, so, yeah. In fact, <laughs> it's... Going back, sorry. Go I was going to say, isn't he actually playing live later this year? He is. He's doing Isn't a UK you? tour. Amazing. All I know, I don't I haven't actually looked. Well, I've looked, but obviously, me being in Manchester, I've only gone. When is he in Manchester? And it's October. And is that just him playing again, or is this with a full don't orchestra? Know. Is I'm going to find out. We need to Ooh, get on exciting. that. We need to get he's some be tickets using to that. Kronos, We've done he? him some some advertising. Yeah. Yeah. We need to try and interview him. Yeah, that would be great. We'll get him on the I, next. I won't be able to do it. I won't be able to do it. I could, I'd, I'd freeze. They'd just be dribble, dribbling. <laughs> dribbling, mess. dribbling. Yeah. The sounds of dripping and then John Carpenter walking What's out. What's going on with this guy? It's <laughs> just dribbling. I, don't, I just I can't, I can't, I can't speak up in to a corner. Yeah, yeah I wouldn't Babbling. know what to do. Well, yeah, but yeah, so well, I think we need to do that. Amazing. We need to go. We need to tweet some pickies. But yeah, I, don't, I know he's doing a tour. I think he's doing. You, you We looked before, didn't we, Luke? Is, it, is he doing Scotland as well? I think he's doing a full tour. It's a few dates. A few yeah, dates. Check it out. John Carpenter live. He will be playing a Kronos, so that's pretty cool. Yes. Um, so anyway, got, referring back to last month's podcast, I uh, set you a task of watching the greatest John Carpenter movie of all time, They Live. <laughs> Come on, did no, you No, you set us a task of to watch They Live. <laughs> what did I just say? The greatest John Carpenter film it is ever. The, it is the greatest John Carpenter film already. And actually, Rowdy Roddy Piper has died. Yeah, I know. I did. Just I did. sad. Yeah, it was very sad. He was a top, top dude. Did did you watch it? Have yeah, you seen? Ian's got him in the end. Did you watch the film? Yeah, I know it? Ian watched it. I watched it, yeah. And uh, I don't think Gareth watched it, but Ian watched it because he he actually, <laughs> funny enough, what did watched it. Of it. Well, we did the podcast whenever it was uh, during the day. He watched it that night. Did he? <laughs> yeah, it's like you obviously sold it well. Yeah. I actually discovered. I'd started watching it, so I got the you know the bit where it's kind of, it's just panning across, and you've got like a the train going past, um, just going through a tunnel and stuff. Um, but at the same time, I kneeled on like a little Lego brick on on the wooden floor at home, and I realised actually <laughs> kneeling, kneeling on 
the Lego was much less painful than watching the film. So I just uh, I just rolled around on the floor and Lego for half an other hour. Than so the, you know, maybe a woman giving birth. Not maybe a woman giving birth. You know, what would you say is the literally the worst pain you could have? I reckon stand kneeling on a Lego bricks, but standing on a plug is a killer. Oh yeah. Oh, that's oh right. I tell you another one. Hurt. Cracking your little toe on a door frame. Oh. You ever done that? Yeah. The, the one where you don't know what to cry, whether yeah. to shout Shin or throw it across Shin on a step. That's yeah. another one. I once um, I used to play basketball and I was, you know, much healthier and fitter. And um, I once ran into a fold up, folded up squash court um, <laughs> head first. I basically went for a shot. Folded oh, up squash court? You know, like, we don't have these things. Okay, this is... Okay, what, Andy, stop. Right, but what squash? Much, first of all, <laughs> squash is a drink. That's it. it. Yeah, that's it. yes. It's, this is a, a, a place a where people go and drink. It's, you know what squash is, right? So it's the game where you smack a ball against the wall, wall and then, yeah, yeah. And then the, you your opponent like beats you. Died, you. That's, that's what I know of it anyway. But you, the uh, the basketball hall we used to play used to be able to fold these the squash courts literally up against the wall, and then they, so you, you'd have a basketball well, what, court. What on. Bit? I don't get that because a squash court is a room. Yeah, it's a room, but fold up room. But yeah, but it's but it's it's three walls that if you fold them in, then it gets out of the way. Yeah, but then I'm, I'm moving my hands in a folding like a motion. Glass wall, isn't it? Okay. Yeah, this is like a perspex wall that people can watch. Yeah, yeah, but it's but they they can all move. That's kind of the th- they, nah, I don't yeah. see. I suppose, yeah, that's I don't have inventions like that. They must have a door. If you, if, otherwise, you wouldn't be able to get in. If you it? imagine a box <laughs> with four sides, that's yeah, that's, yeah, yeah. and then imagine square. folding that box up. Yeah. Right, and then making it a lot bigger and turning that into a squash court in a basketball. Basically, I I ran head first into this, and then to to be fixed, I had to go to the doctor and have seven staples in my head. Right, that yeah. was pretty pay- painful. That does explain a lot, actually. Yeah, it does. That's why I look like this. I don't. Why are we even talking about? Oh yeah, they live. So you've not watched. So what you're trying to tell me, Andy, is that we the homework I set you last month, you've not done it. I know. I, I started it, but, so I, not, but I'd right, rather yeah, have yeah, seven yeah. staples in my head and finish it. Liked it. it. So, did you enjoy it? Luke? Sound soundtrack did, was great. I thought it was. Okay, the soundtrack wasn't very good. I just think <laughs> I love the concept of it, yeah. and I love it when I mean it's ridiculous in it. We made a film about glasses, and I know I didn't sell it the very bits well with the glasses and looking at the aliens. Actually, was quite good. I yeah, thought. it's a cool film for its day. It had the guy from Pitch good. Black in it as well. Which guy? The I don't. He was in Pitch Black. He was kind of the um, the priest. Character. No, it's not him, is yes, it? Yep, absolutely. I don't believe you. True I'm story. Go- I'm, he's I'm on, on his on phone IMDb again. right now. I'm going to check that out. I'd be definitely compared to he's some in, of the... Um, he's in the third one as well. Not third, he's in the second one, isn't it? But definitely compared to some of the other John Carpenter films where he's done the music, like Halloween, for instance, the, the music definitely isn't quite as good, shall we say. No, it's not as recognisable. No, um, it's very repetitive. I only watched it because of WWF Wrestling. Rowdy Rodder, Roddy. Yeah, that's the one. So, yeah, that's the only reason why I, I watched it, but I enjoyed it. I don't care if you liked it. Anyway, moving on. We spoke <laughs> earlier about BPM. Yes. So we're going to have a, a bit of a sesh at BPM. So come and yeah. see us. We're going to be there live. So it's Korg and Samson, isn't it? Korg and stand? Samson yeah. and Gareth and Ian yes. and me, Adam and Luke. Yeah. Luke. And Andy, oh, oh no, he can't make it. Andy's not coming. Yeah. I'll be, I'll be there for the out. second day, so I'd hold out to them because that's really when it's going to start getting good. Yeah, so we, we'll be demonstrating all sorts of cool gear, but we've got a competition. We talking have. about. So um, we we're running this competition called Volca Live, uh, Volca Live Sessions, and it's basically an opportunity for anyone who's into the Volcas or wants to, um, to have a go at performing with them, to come to BPM. Uh, on us and perform on stage really yeah that's pretty cool yeah so the way that you apply is you can um, send a link of your performance which hopefully you can upload to like YouTube or Facebook or, or Twitter um, using the hashtag Volca Live and then you can send us an email at Volca Live at Korg.co.uk that's Volca Live at Korg.uk Sorry, <laughs> we'll edit that be out. Don't worry, yeah. Luke. Start again. So it's BPM, Vo- Luke. What are we doing? <laughs> Volker Live at Korg.co.uk. So, yeah, you can uh, use any Volkers you want. Volker sample, Volker beats, Volker bass, Volker keys in any configuration. And oh, yeah. so you can, you can use more than one. It's you not can just use more than one. In Ooh. fact, it's sixteen. Do can we enter? Can we do that? I don't win. think so. Oh. What would you do? What would you have on it? What? Because you'd put right. Imagine it's a Volker sample. Yeah. Right. You're going to win this competition, right? Now, with that, 
um, in mind, what do you think? You'd, what what cool samples would you have in it to win? I would like to use some Hans Zimmer monstrous samples and try and recreate something like Batman yeah. and go something completely the different. Inception, Inception. So, yeah, I've got that on my go. phone. Oh, we should have a listen. Hang to on, that. I'll see if I've still got it. It's quite funny. Um, everyone should do this. Go online and search for. Have I got it? Oh, where is it gone? Just while he's looking for that. So okay. this performance can be between five and eight minutes minute. long. Um, you can use the Volker FM if you're looking enough to have one of those as well. We will have the Volkers there. So the idea is just to turn up really and kind of freestyle it on our Volkers. Shall we find out what Hans Zimmer thinks yeah, about that? There we go. You ready? Not what a lot, it? obviously. That's it. As long as you get a big red button and you <laughs> press it and it does the, the Hans Zimmer noise. He's got bad Wi-Fi. There you go. Uh, that that sounds just like a big wasp stuck in a glass, yeah. doesn't it? No, that's not, honestly, when it's, <laughs> that sounds a bit naffy, but when it's up to you, hooked up to a PA or whatever, it's got some bass, yeah. Yeah. Some yeah. bass. Some so, bass. So what, sorry, so, you do Hans Zimmer. I'd, I'd, no, I'd like to tr mm. do something kind of like the, dark, like the Dark Knight, using some of those samples, put that together, and then maybe maybe a Dark Knight remix. Something That'd like be that. cool. That'd be, be different, yeah. What about yourself? Me? Um. It'd have to what be, game uh, would it be? It's yeah, got, yeah exactly. <laughs> yeah. Be a game. It's Mortal Kombat all the way. Mortal, yeah, that'd be cool. That'd be Get really over good. here! <laughs> that'd be cool, wouldn't it? Fatality. <laughs> it'd, it'd be brilliant. That'd, that'd be, be cool. Or, uh, I mean, you could do anything. You could do a Mario mix with all yep. the Mario sounds. Yeah, yeah. That'd be cool. Um, what else could you do? We're talking about this the other night. I'm trying to think, what else? What else could you do? Um, yeah, I think it'd be one of them two. I think it'd be pretty cool. Or just taking... Um, an original song and chopping it up, like you said, make it, remixing something like a oh. remix. Yeah, maybe like the a, a famous theme, like the Kill Bill theme or something, and maybe remixing it up. You could do yeah, take take bits from bam, various bam, Bond bam. themes, etc., stuff like that. Bond probably. theme, right? Bam. Now there's there another, that's yeah. another topic. There we are. Best Bond theme. Well, for, no, hang on. Best Bond. Uh, well, it's I, obviously uh, this is controversial. <laughs> it's it's Daniel Craig. No, no, that's not controversial because I would agree with that because obviously... Oh, that's not what you said earlier. No, for me, is is not the Bond... If I think of James Bond, I don't think of Daniel Craig, if that makes sense. I think of Roger Moore because that's the Bond I grew up yeah, with. fair enough. You know, so I've went, although it was an... You know, Daniel Craig is phenomenal. Yeah, I actually like um, Thingy as well. Pierce oh, yeah, Bond. he's really good. Oh, oh Pierce... <laughs> Yeah, yeah. Golden Eye is the best Bond film. Oh, That's a really good no, it, it would have been James. <laughs> <laughs> it's my Sean Bean impression because he dies in everything. Spoiler, but he does <laughs> everything. Yeah. He does, you know, he's, he's just die. as bad as Andy, really. No, he yeah. does. Um, for England, James. Yeah, but the, but they had a BMW in that one, not the uh, not yeah. the Aston. So it no, doesn't. No, that, yeah, yeah, that was so that was yeah. the remote control BMW. Some of his later ones, he had the Vanquish in it, didn't he? Yeah, but it's a good film though. But yeah, Roger Moore for me. Mm. You only live twice. Volcano opens up. Comes out. Great, Moonraker. great theme as well. Moonraker, let's go to space. How do, what does the theme for that one sound like? You only live twice. That, it it starts off with that really nice. Yeah. 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 yeah, you know the... Um, it starts off with that really nice high yeah, string line. I think oh, Robbie yeah. Williams wrote yeah, yeah. it. Oh, right, okay, yeah. Mer gotcha. You know, the bit at the beginning. That's... I yeah, like. You said, yeah, you sampled it. Yeah. I have to say, I think the um, the Sam Smith one from the latest film was unbelievably good. Yeah, unbelievably it's... pants. Sorry, it's oh. not for me. Come on, sing it. No. Exactly. No one no. knows it. It's not. He's good. I'm not Sam Smith. No, but he's he's a, he's good. And I, I like first the, first um, ever Bond theme that was number like one as well. Theme. Yeah. What's that? That was the first ever Bond theme that no, was at number rubbish. one. Rubbish. No, it's true. <laughs> But, uh, Skyfall no, got I'm going to check one, now right? just, just gonna Adele check. sang Skyfall yep there we go Skyfall was number one that wasn't yes it was was it yeah Adele sang it anything she does goes <laughs> to number it's one it's pronounced Adel thank uh, you yeah. Adel um, I bet um, wasn't um, You Only Live Twice um, not that um, Live and Let Die I bet that was number one Paul McCartney Wings no nope. Sam Smith was the I first number one was actually. Um, I don't believe you okay. anyway so yeah best Bond theme then so we've now argued over who's the best. Who's your best Bond, Luke? Uh, Danny Craig, definitely. Yeah, yeah, he's good, isn't he? He is good. Yeah. Who and do you think Connery of? Who do you, 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 you? Connery was it yeah. that you used to? No, Connery is the second best, I think. Yeah. Me. But yeah, Roger Moore is the one I grew up with. I do like Roger Moore. Yeah, Roger Moore is where it's at for me. Just keeping the British end up, sir. <laughs> <laughs> no, but it is though. Yes. He, he brought that like gadgety, funny. 
you yeah, know it was the most comedic wasn't yeah, it yeah definitely so what's the best Bond film then Bond film uh, I do like Goldeneye yeah it's um, between Goldeneye but again that's because we're the, we're the gaming generation as well yeah, you've got the, the, game, the game you take the game out of the equation it's probably not is it no, I like, I like the film. What was, what was the last? I forgot what the last Bond film was called. There was Skyfall, and then there was uh, yeah, that classic that Sam Smith sang. Do you not remember it? No, but I remember the film. The <laughs> film was just it's no, just. It's was just it's <laughs> it wasn't called that though, was it? I don't know. I Whatever. It. It's either it was one of the two Daniel Craig films. Skull in it in the um, on the. Ah, oh, it's gonna bug me now. I can't, I can't believe, believe we don't know. know. This. this is ridiculous. If you could tweet in. Uh, no, 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 no. <laughs> hang on. Give me a minute. It'll come to me. But what's your? Um... Oh, it's gonna come to me. I really like the Bond themes. Actually, from the, the sort of eighties. I like that. Yeah, yeah. Uh, yeah John Duran Duran and Aha. Uh-huh. Aha, uh-huh, those two. Aha. Uh-huh. 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 Living daylights. <laughs> gonna do that then. Oh, sorry, can't living daylights. Future to kill. Yeah, they're great. I love the classics. Me going right back. I like Doctor No. Uh, from Russia with Love, yeah, Matt Monroe, um, Goldfinger, Goldfinger, um, that's cool. I still um, think Live and Let Die is the. Uh, that's a great tune, yeah. Is you know uh, nobody that. does it better. I quite like that theme actually. Nice piano. That's yeah. the one that Partridge does. Nobody does it better. That's what I have to <laughs> yeah. Look that up as you get a second. <laughs> Amazing. Um, yeah, uh, Live and Let Die is probably my favourite. Did David Arnold do the... I know he obviously wrote the theme, didn't he? But Spectre. Did, for what? Spectre for, for is the Bond, latest Bond sorry, theme. But, but, but didn't he do Not it for... Not listening to me anymore. I'll just, I'll just carry on. Yeah, it's just us two now. So uh, Spectre adult is, the, is the new <laughs> Bond theme. Spectre. There, there we go. go. There yeah. you go. There we are. There we go. Inspector Bond. Inspector Bond. Yeah, that's very good. What were you saying about David Arnold? I was saying about... Did he compose the theme for the first one and then other people sort of got involved for the score side of things? Or what, did you mean he... the very first Bond? Yeah. No, no, no. No, did, no. He only came in on... Uh, I said, what tomorrow was, never. What dies. was he called, um, Mr. Bond guy? Did all the themes back in the day. John Barry. John, John Barry. Barry. I sold Sorry, his wife yes, a, a piano. Did you? Did you? Yeah. Actually, we tell stories. There very you go. Good. There you go. Yeah. So um, I think we were divorced. Though, I don't think it was oh. very. Uh, what she buy? A PSR. No, she bought a Technics piano. Oh. KN. PR. 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 KN oh. was the keyboard. Oh, okay. Oh. There you go. A bit of trivia there good for to you. Know. But yeah, um, so yeah, I um, uh, yeah, I forgot what I was going to say. Yeah, here, here we go. A bit of trivia for you. <clears throat> On the original Bond theme, who played the guitar? Uh, Pop quiz. It's not the guy from the shadows, is it? No. Because it's that sort of sound, isn't it? No. Nope. What, Hank? You won't get it, unless you know one of them. Pop quiz. I don't know. Mick Flick. Mick <laughs> Flick. <laughs> Wow. <laughs> Seriously? I thought it was going to be someone we knew then. No, no, it's Mick Flick. The, the star of Bugs Life by the yeah. Pixar. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. 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 Mick Flick. That's a diverse wow. career, right? Yeah. yeah. So, yeah, anyway. We've, we've, we've That's good, because no, nobody yeah, anyway. could possibly digress. So, so. anyway, well, I don't even know how we got on. To, oh, Volkers. Was it Volkers? We're talking what about BPM Live, I think. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. 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 BPM, yeah, we were talking about this event, weren't we? Yeah, so Competition. create yeah. your own um, Volker tune. Uh, so just to refresh what that was again, Luke, so... You've got to record your own kind of tune on a Volker. Record your own, yeah. Post yep. it online. Uh, deadline's September the 5th. Mm-hmm. Um, email us at Korg, um, Volker, Volker Live at korg.co.uk. And if you put it online or tweeting it or Facebooking it, hashtag it Volker Live. Yeah. And if you want to um, tweet us at Microcast, we'll also retweet it for yeah. you. Or tweet. Get your at, videos out there. Or tweet at Korg UK. UK. So, there you go. Cool. Right. Well, I think we'll have a, a little break and I'm going to um, have a brew this time. Welcome back to part three. Three, is it three? Four? Three. Three. Welcome back to part three. Sorry, it's because it's like one o'clock in the morning and I'm knackered. But here we are. Um, part three. I've had my brew, so I'm ready. Raring to go. Raring to go. Raring, that's a word raring. for me. I struggle. Ra- raring, is that what raring. you say? No, raring. 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 <laughs> With me lambskin. What do you say on you? Raring. Raring. Raring to go. Raring. <laughs> raring to go. Yeah, I'm sure you say it like that. No. Anyway, part three. Learned Here we that. are. So, Luke, 
Hello. You've had an exciting uh, bit of contact with a company called My Vaults. I have. Uh, do you want to tell us a bit about who they are, what they do? Yep, yeah, they're an online company. And they kind of just contacted me out of the blue um, to say, mm. we've got some cool products for Volkers. And cool. I was like, okay, so what have you got? So they say, oh, we do chargers and we do <clears throat> all things like uh, cables to connect them together. But one of the cool things they do is actually a, a power supply where you can just plug it into the mains, but it, it's actually like a distribution thing. So you can power up to five volts oh, at that, once. Oh, that's cool. It's just one cable. And even cooler, they do a USB version. So you can, and it's bus powered, so you can plug it into your laptop or your computer. And it powers multiple now, Volkers. My favourite one is they do um, a car charger. They, they do. So if you're at the traffic Volker lights. On the, Volker on the, not the traffic lights. We do not condone playing synths but I was the, or gadgets as a passenger. passenger. Yeah, absolutely. As, as a, a passenger. passenger. But if you were a passenger in a car, you could have your Volker powered up from your car. <laughs> That's awesome. And then you could go to the traffic lights and MIDI up to it. How about that? You could MIDI up to your traffic lights. <laughs> it's all Unless Beetle it's Drive the... all again, but what, what it means uses you could... The thing is, down in the camping. south, you won't know this, but in the south, the traffic lights actually have a sink in most of the time, they so do, you can yeah. just do that. See, yeah. I don't have that. No. 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 You, we, you have Beetle have, Drive, we have sink traffic lights. We have lights. Um, Braille. Do you not have the Braille? We do, yeah, Pelican absolutely. Crossing with a little knob that you hold and it spins round. Right. Okay, that might be something else. Yeah, no. Nah. I don't have the don't have anything else up north. Just got letterboxes. I like that up north we've got Braille. <laughs> <So amazing. laughs> no, I'm just trying to have cool. A Braille and ale pie. That's very pleasant. That's good. Yeah. yeah. Listen, you just need Pee Wee Beetle Drive. That's <laughs> all you need. So my vaults. Yeah. So my vaults. So yeah, it's a, just check out the website. It's myvaults.co.uk, <clears> and they've got some really cool stuff on there. Really affordable stuff as well. And um, yeah, so I said I'd give them a shout out on the podcast, and that's what I'm doing. So yeah, so myvolts.co.uk. So, I mean, just sticking with the, the Volker theme, um, something else has been released recently, which has uh, got some um, critical acclaim, and it's the Volker FM Guide. Yes. Uh, you know about this as well, Luke, by Tony Horgan, um, who uh, I thought it was Horgan. It's going to go into a whole WWF thing. Oh, well, we just can't do that. No. But well, kind of we need work. to reel it in now before we get too, uh, I know. too WWF. Yeah. No, no. It's reeled in. Good, we've got it. We've got it. Um, so, Report yeah, he follows time, us yeah. on... Um, <laughs> he close. follows um, us. He follows the podcast. So, yeah. I'm sure he'll be uh, listening in. He's a great guy. And the, and the yeah. guide is fantastic. Phenomenal. Yeah, yeah. It's so detailed. Um, he's a very knowledgeable person about... Um, music and Volkers, of course, is very passionate about them. So it started off all, it's obviously all about the FM, this particular um, version. So it's available on the App Store. Yes, iBooks. iBooks. Yeah. Um, it's seven ninety nine. is it? I think so, I think yeah. it's seven ninety nine. He's also done one on the Volker Beats as yes. well, which and is I, I don't equally if, as good. I don't, hot off the press, exclusive, but I don't know if you've seen it, but um, he tweeted somebody the other day saying he's doing another one. Yeah, starts in September. Yeah, he hasn't decided. But he hasn't decided one, which yeah. one. What? Do, which one do you reckon he should do next? Hmm. I think keys. The keys would yeah. be a good one. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's your personal agree, favourite, isn't it? The keys. It is yeah, absolutely. The keys, yeah. The keys. yeah, definitely. Um, yeah, so you can play Sega Rally like that one on my Jam. Twitter feed. Yeah. Um, so yeah, I'd, that'd be cool if you could do that. So check that one out. So that's the uh, Volker it, FM guide. Yeah, anyone who's got a Volker Beats or an FM, they're well worth <laughs> a look because it takes you right into the depths of every single thing you can do with it. So yeah. So that's pretty cool by uh, Tony Horgan. So check that out. Um, and then the other thing is um, something that we've tweeted literally today. So obviously by the time this goes out, it'll be probably two weeks ago, the old news. Um, but it's that MS20 mod. Oh, yeah. Have you seen this? I bet you've not even seen it. I've not seen even this. seen it, no. We this is, just yeah. it today. You've just seen it today. So, do you, wanna, do you know what it is, Luke? Have we, do I just, well, just briefly from what I saw <clears> on Twitter, but it's this guy, and he's... We're going to retweet it on Microcast if you want to check it out. Um, but um, he has modded his MS20, and he's put wooden sides on it. It's all about the wood. Yeah, so it just looks amazing. Plus, he's added some features... And put a little panel on the top. On the top, yeah. I'm gonna check it out, and it's wicked. And he's done. Some I'm gonna tweet it now. Really cool things. Um, he's added some of the features that were on the MS20 rack version kit that we did. The MS20M, I should say, it's called. 
um, so such as things which you couldn't do on the original light you can modulate the pulse width and um, some sync features and a couple of other things um, it's just really really cool you should check it out have a look on the Twitter you'll see the picture of it yeah there it is I can't I wait to see that I've just tweeted awesome. it now I'm retweeting it and I'm, I'm going to like it as well who is it um, who's done that did you say sorry it's, it's, it's his name's on there you should see Martin it Martin Walker Martin okay. Walker Martin yeah. Walker um, it's on Ask Audio Mag on Twitter and it's behold this monster synth mod for the MS20 might leave you speechless it's a really really it nice looks I mean even done, with the cherry wood it? panel it's got cherry yeah. wood panels cherry wood looks awesome upgrade from tree wood that's <laughs> incredible yeah. <laughs> yeah yeah it looks awesome very nice so yeah check that out um, yeah so that's that and which leads very us good. on very good to this month's Korg chronology what a nice segue that what was. a nice yeah. segue that is um, well this this product needs no introduction because we've just been speaking about it yeah so Luke so over to you we're going to talk about the Korg MS20 yeah awesome yeah probably one of the most famous if not the most famous product Korg has ever made or any company for that matter um, it was launched in 1978 there's a whole range of these so you had the MS-10, MS-50, um, alongside the SQ-10, um, and the VC-10 as well. I'll explain what those are in a minute. But before this, just to give you a little bit of history, Korg made some amazing polysynths, and they were called the PS series. Um, boasted amazing specs for the time. Um, so in 77, there was the PS-3100, had an integrated keyboards, completely polyphonic. Um, it had actually an oscillator, a filter, a VCA, and an envelope for each key. So it's 48 note polyphonic. Awesome. Nice. Analog synth. Absolutely unbelievable. Uh, it could also be flexibly patched um, to freely adjust tunings and stuff like that. <clears throat> then uh, in that same year, you had the PS3300. Uh, this was actually the flagship of this range. Um, uh, it contained three. PS3100 units, so that's 144 mono synths in one thing. It's just staggering. Um, yeah, it was a favourite of Keith Emerson and John Michel Jarre, apparently. Uh, the following year, 1978, the PS3200 came, and this was kind of a different format. It separated the keyboard from the sound generator. Um, it contained two VCOs and programmable memory, um, and it also had, had patch storage in it as well, which is amazing. You could store up to 16 sounds. So they were what cool. kind of came around that time. Yeah. But then in 1978, after those successes, uh, Korg really wanted to bring this technology to the masses because these were amazing synths, but they were very, very expensive, as you can imagine, yeah. especially back then. So that's where the MS series came from. <clears throat> so we used some of the same technology, um, but kind of made it in a more affordable package. So you had the MS-10 and the MS-20. So the MS-10 was a single oscillator, MS-20, double du dual oscillator. Um, the MS-50 was kind of like a rack version with a few additional features on it, like a VU meter and some other things. You had the SQ-10, which was a sequencer. Mm. Um, and of course, we've got the kind of modern version of that, the yep. SQ-1. Um, then you also had the VC-10, which is a vocoder. Uh, we've actually got one of these in the office. I don't know whether you've seen it. Yes, I have. Yeah, it looks a little bit like an MS-20, but it's got a, a mic in it and it's got a VU meter on it. So, yeah, that's that was kind of the, the whole range, but it was much more affordable. <clears throat> uh, around the same sort of time, uh, the contemporaries of it were our own Arp Odyssey, um, yep. Rev3, which is the, the current reissue we've done. Um, also the Arp Quadra, the Oberheim OB1, uh, the Synclavier by New England, a um, few Roland synths as well. The CR78, which is a drum machine. Uh, SH1, 2, and 7. The Prophet 5 came out in this year. <clears throat> and also some Yamaha CS synths. Mega um, year, then. <laughs> unbelievable <laughs> year, year for synths. It's, it's just like, like legendary synths. Hits. Yeah, it is. Um, the CS5 and the CS15 Yan Yamaha. And the previous year, the mighty CS80 had come out as well, which is an amazing synth from Yamaha. <clears throat> So the original price of the MS-20, which is the one we're talking about, was about $700. So, again, quite a lot of money then, but yeah, yeah. compared to some of the other stuff, not too expensive. Um, and it's it has such an iconic and distinctive sound, mm. um, partly because of the filters. So it has two filters, which is quite unusual to have a high-pass and a low-pass. Yeah. 
so you can really get that kind of you can use it as a band pass as well because you can kind of sculpt out the, the the frequencies that you want it was two oscillators um it was hardwired it was called semi-modular so it was the left hand side it was hardwired but it was patchable as well so it was lo like a mini arp 2600 really that kind yeah, of thing yeah um another real big attraction of it and still is is the fact it's got an external input so you can plug anything into it yeah. and kind of start mangling that audio with the filter and the LFO and so on. And it also has a pitch to CV converter so you can get some really mad effects by tracking the pitch of what you put into it to the to the synth. Now, sorry to interrupt you there, but obviously going back to um, me and my uh, YouTube wandering that I often do, <laughs> uh, I tweeted a video this week about a guy that's linked... Well, he's not linked, he's just done layers with video and have you seen the ms20 mini one he's done of he's done zelda 2 i think you told me about yeah, it but i haven't it's, seen it's, it honestly yet. check it out it's brilliant so it's like five tracks so five little videos of him playing all the different parts of zelda 2 it's just That's immense fantastic. check it, honestly zelda 2 ms20 awesome i've just heard out of interest as well i just did a calculation so it was 700 dollars yes Okay, so I've just calculated that in modern money, that's two thousand six hundred and sixty-six dollars. Bargain! Wow. So that's a, that's a serious bit of gear, isn't it? Yeah, it, it is. A... So famous artists, there's literally hundreds of them, but some of the more famous ones who have used it are um, William Orbit, Aphex Twin, Vince Clark, um, Apollo Four Forty, Mr. Wazo, The Prodigy, OMD, Daft Punk, Cold Cut. Um, it's just so everyone, endless. yeah, <laughs> everyone. it's just unbelievable. Got, Roy Sock, Gorillas. Shaman, Gorillas, Jean Michel Jarre, Portishead, Gold Frap, Barry Manilow. No, I bet he's used one. He probably has. I bet he's Scooter. Used one. <laughs> That's a good one. Yeah. <laughs> I just write that one off. <laughs> so, like, everyone, so I yeah, mean, so it's, it's one of the most popular synths. And if ever, anyone who doesn't know what the synth I'm talking about or the sound, go and listen to um, Mr. Wazzo's album which includes flat beat so that's like the flat eric song um i was going to do an impression that didn't come out very well doesn't sound in like my that. head then I, I could i could do the impression just go to song. youtube and listen to it, it <laughs> yeah just, i just think of the golf it kind of encapsulates dancing. the smoothness and the fatness of yeah. the ms20 but then if you want to hear the kind of searing filters listen to da funk by daft punk mm. and that kind of lead line in that is ms20 yeah and daft punk are big fans um so the MS-20, it's a funny sort of journey it's been on because when it, when it first launched, actually, apparently, it wasn't that popular because really? it was quite expensive still in the day, even though compared to other stuff, it wasn't necessarily um, really expensive. No. But it really came into its own kind of mid to late 90s mm. um, when a lot of this analog gear, a lot of it had just been thrown away by people or sold off really cheap. So you had things like the Roland TB303. Yeah. And the and the MS Twenty and a few other things, they kind of had a renaissance, and it created a whole new type of music, and um, that's really when it started coming into its own. So a lot of those artists you heard me talk about just then, is kind of that era mm. or later. Um, what's amazing about the MS Twenty, as far as I'm concerned, it's a massive part of Korg's history, not just because of the original, but because throughout the last sort of decade or more we've reissued it in lots of different forms. Yeah. So the year that Korg reissued the first version of the MS-20 was actually in 2004 with the Korg Legacy Collection. Anyone remember that? I do. I do remember that. Wasn't there an M1 with that as well? Is that fair to say? Yeah, there was, was one part of the, um, part that series. I think that came a little bit later, actually. Right. But the cool thing about this uh, Legacy Collection, when it first came out, was it actually came with a little controller in the shape of MS-20. Yes, ah. that's it. Yeah, I do remember that. And it even had the patch cables, which when you patch them in, it, the ch software changed on the screen and it was wicked. Um, and cool. that, that was actually 84% of the size of the original. Um, so that was really what started this whole bull rolling. The rebirth. The MS20. Yeah, the rebirth, yeah. So then a couple of years later, we saw it in the Oasis in software form. So this was kind of like the legacy plug-in version. Yeah then in the Oasis as um, an upgrade called the LAC-1 upgrade. Then in 2008, Adam's going to like this one, the DS-10 came out. Yeah. 
this was the Nintendo DS version which wasn't quite an MS-20 but it was kind of like an MS-10, MS-20 with other elements again, mixed in. Again, massive following on, U- on YouTube. Yeah. Anything, just type in that, um, you know, Nintendo or whatever, every theme you can ever think of. People have done it. I need to check that out. I've never actually seen a no, DS. Well, I've never really tried cool. it on a DS. Maybe you just even get a, a DS. They did it, yeah. They did mm. another <laughs> version in 2009 as well mm. on the DS, called the DS10 Plus on the DSi, which is the newer version yep. of the DS. Um, just incredible the fact that Korg like partnered with Nintendo as well. I was just like, that's so amazing. good, isn't it? It's oh, wicked. It's yeah. wicked. You just need to do it in a Volker. Absolutely. Just, you know, Stop going on about it. It will happen. I'm sure it will. And you'll all thank me. Yeah. <laughs> thank you. Okay. 2010. Then came the Monotron, of course, and also the Monotribe, and they actually used the same filter circuit as the MS10 and the MS20 respectively. So, again, that was a kind of a leap forward for us because obviously that was the first time we'd gone down the analog route again if you like mm. with the monotron um so that was quite a momentous thing for us then in 2010 the same year there was an ipad version called yep. the ims20 which is a great app if anyone's not seen that because it's not just an ms20 it's got a sequencer in it as well so it's got like elements of the ms50 in there and the sq uh 10 as well supercharged ms20 absolutely it's nice. just, and it's polyphonic yeah so, there we go um then in 2011, when the Kronos launched, we put the engine in the Kronos. Mm-hmm. So that was called the MS20 EX. So it's effectively the same thing that we saw in the Oasis, ported over to the Kronos. And then the unbelievable happened in 2013. We actually reissued the MS20, called the MS20 Mini. So this was. A, Which is what you can buy today. Exactly, yeah. So, and it's still available. Um, the original engineers worked on it. All the components pretty much where available were used. Um, same components as the original. Um, the only real difference was it's slightly smaller and the fact it had the bonus of USB, USB and yeah. on it to bring it up to kind of modern techniques for production and everything. Um, in 2014, next year, there was an MS-20 kit. So this is a full-size version of an MS-20. Uh-huh. Uh, and pretty much the same as the mini version but obviously full size but it had both filters in it both types because there was original filter called the 35 mm. and then a later filter called the 13600 and they sound a little bit different um, some people are fans of the early ones some people prefer the late ones so we decided to put both of them put in both there on, yeah. a switchable nice. filter it's like the ARP exactly yeah it has all three, three filters, filters. Yeah. yeah exactly right then the next year in 2015 there's the MS20M so both of these were um, limited edition, by the way, the kit and the, the M, which is the kind of rack version. But on the rack version, we added a couple of things, um, a bit like that modded one we were talking about earlier. Yeah. So it had a switchable filter, but it also had oscillator sync, uh, frequency modulation, and pulse width modulation. So you could modulate the pulse width with the LFO. And it also included an SQ1. Cool. Free, which is pretty cool. cool. So was that as you built in, or was that just the as part, that's no? It's just a, a, just yeah. part of the package. You oh, just got one with it. Yeah, so that's cool. Then in the same year, there was an IDS10, which is uh, an iPhone app, which is kind of like the DS10 Nintendo version, but in an iPhone. Yeah. So this is something that's just come out back in the last year, actually. I think it's just incredible that you can get something like that as an app now. It's mad, isn't it? Yeah. Because they sound great as well. So don't they, they do. So it's good. Like the gadget stuff that we spoke about last month. Yeah. To make the, the quality of them now is just, it's, you know, people like writing film soundtracks on it. And well, but it makes it so accessible for everyone <clears> as well. I mean, so you, can, you can actually get your hands on this and it becomes a usable thing, especially if you combine it with the things that we were talking about earlier. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Nano keys and bits. something else to mention in a minute. I'll tell you in a minute. Totally mm-hmm. good. Um, yeah, so just finally, really, on the MS20 um, Mini, um, I was talking to some of the artist people uh, at Korg HQ and just to give you a bit of a heads up on some of the people who are actually using MS20 Minis, and we know this for certain, because sometimes you go to sites or it's all like word of mouth, who's used what over the yeah. years, but these are actual people who we know have an MS20 because we've actually supplied them with them. Wow. Yeah, the MS20 Mini. Sold them. To yeah, them. exactly. So And, and all, they've all bought them as well. That's the thing. They don't just say, oh, can I have them for free, please? They actually say, please, 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 can we buy an MS20? So that's really cool. Um, so a few of those people are Patchett Boys, The Claxons, Steve Levine, Culture Club, Matt Berry, Kasabian, Elbow, Lily Allen, Ellie Goulding, Massive Attack, Labyrinth, Duran Duran, Primal Scream, Paul Epworth, 
Happy Mondays, the BBC Radiophonic Workshop. So that's not bad for starters, just for one synth. That's amazing. Yeah. And that's that's obviously not going to be everyone either, is it? No, that's just a few of them, yeah, exactly. Um, I just picked up a, a few highlights there. Yeah, so a phenomenal product. Yeah. And still available now in the mini form. Absolutely, yeah. And it will be for some time. I've, I've also picked out a few video links for you, which we'll tweet as well. Um, there's loads of MS20 videos out there and MS20 mini ones. We'll put the Zelda um, one in there. And the Zelda one will add. <laughs> um, but the ones I picked out was Matt Berry's done a really nice interview about it. Primal Scream have done the same. There's the original launch video, which is really nice. Yeah. Which I think we're going to use some of the music from that actually in this podcast to introduce it. Um, there's also a really good interview with the engineers, the original engineers, about when they were going to reissue the MS20. So that's quite interesting. Uh, Radiophonic Workshop. I've also done an interview. Um, cool. There's a nice one about the IMS20 as well, the iPad app, and the DS10. And also there's this really cool MS20 Mini video um, in the Koshi style, which is kind of like video gamey, kind of Japanese style, yeah. which again, Adam's going to be all over. I'm all over that. So that is the MS20. Fantastic. Fantastic. Cork yeah. Chronology. Episode 2, MS20. Much Amazing. more to come. So, so go on, can we? Just, what's the, do we know what's coming up next? Is there a little teaser, or or is it a secret? Or do we have to? I haven't actually decided yet. So yeah, it's a secret. Oh, it's a secret. Yeah. Okay. You need to help us, follow us. Yeah, if you've got any requests. Yeah, send in your requests. Um, what was the one I said today? MS two thousand, wasn't it? MS two thousand. Yeah. Yeah. I'm sure that will get a, a viewing yeah. anyway. I, I saw a, I saw a rack version of that this week, and it was yeah. like, oh, I was so tempted. I really was. That is it's a phenomenal. Scene. Yeah. Um, fun fact for you: uh, the MS twenty, the MS two thousand, has the same engine. Well, the microcorg inherited the engine of the MS two thousand, which is partly why it just sounds so amazing. Yeah. So obviously, at the back end of last month's podcast, um, we spoke about um, gadget, and following on from that, we've got a competition. Well, not us, but Korg. US, I think, got a, a major competition, um, and it's the remix uh, contest. So basically, I'll just I'll read it because I'm I'm directly on Korg.com. Uh, get Kamata and participate in a contest to win. So Korg, Bandai Namco Studios, and Dtune have teamed up to hold the ultimate Kamata contest. Kamata. Pick your favourite topic from one of two categories and use the Korg Gadgets online sharing function, Gadget Cloud or YouTube, to upload a sound recording or video. We are arranging a special prize for the best work submitted. So that's them, not us. So it will be a special prize. Not, you know. Not like a cup or a biro. <laughs> yeah, no. yeah, that's going to be some, sounds pretty special. A that. coaster. The deadline for submissions is September the 10th, Saturday. We have lots of great prizes, including a Nano Key Studio, Nano Control Studio, so that's cool. That's Ooh, the new yeah. prize we talked about before. Micro yeah. MicroKey Air, which is the new uh, Bluetooth keyboard that came out last year, and plug keys and things like that. So the way you do it is uh, the, they've got two categories. So two entry categories. The first one, I'm loving this, is the Asteroid Remix category. <laughs> Okay. Yes. Oh so yes. basically, what you do is you buy your Kamata, and it's got a demo on it called Asteroid, and all you do is you do a remix of it. Which okay. Is pretty cool. That sounds fairly now, straightforward. Now that's that's version one, so you can enter that, or you can do one Kamata category, which is option two. Um. So the way this works is use one Kamata gadget, and one track only, for the tune, the sound effects, anything goes. It says Eva here, have fun, even one line jokes are very welcome. So one track. So that'd be pretty cool to see what, what comes up with that. That'd be a lot more difficult. Uh, yeah, but and sometimes having that kind of It restricts you to, to force yeah. you to get the most out of it. Yeah. Do you know what I mean? You find that I think when you're layering audio and you're doing your tracks or whatever, sometimes you just it doesn't force you to think and use the well, way it some of was. the best tracks in history have been people Absolutely. have been forced into using yeah, those yeah. techniques, haven't Absolutely. they? So, yeah. yeah. Mm. Um, so the entry period is July 31st so it's available now to September the 10th um, the contest is open to core gadget app and Kamata gadget owners um, who also have a SoundCloud account or YouTube account I'm going to enter we ask that you choose from one of uh, one of these two categories uh, participants can enter a track 
for each of the categories, if more than one entry for a category is made, only the latest track will be allowed to complete. Uh, the prize winners will be selected by Korg, Bandai Namco Studios, and Detune Contest Committees. Uh, Luke Edwards from Korg cannot... Oh, oh, Luke Edwards from Korg cannot oh. enter. Maybe if we change your name, because we yeah, could do that. Yeah, we yeah. could, just throwing it out there, we could have a, a three-way competition. Between, we could all do it, and we could get it played, and we could do a little mini vote, because no, I think that's much more important than you know what Korg USA what, have. Do, True. Our, do yeah. our own version. Yeah. Well, I need to speak to Ian if we can get one first. <laughs> true. Yeah. Yeah. True. yeah, we need to get one, that's for sure. Yeah, and I think, I'm, I don't know if it's ended. If it hasn't ended, it'll end very soon. But just going back to the gadget stuff, which, to be honest, blew me away um, last month. Um, it's still, a lot of them are still on offer. So it's 50% off. So everybody needs to check that out. I think that might have ended, actually. Has it ended? <laughs> I oh. think it might. I don't think it has. I'm sure I, I retweeted it. was the end of the month. Well, I, I thought that, but it, I'm sure I retweeted it today. Yeah, yeah, but it might have been an old tweet. Yeah, no, well, obviously it might be the middle of the month when this comes out. So, <laughs> <laughs> you probably missed it now. But check it out anyway. Check it out anyway, because it it, yeah. it it is awesome. I mean, you, I mean, full. What are the full price? Fifteen quid or something? I think gadget is about twenty quid. I normally. mean, yeah. So that's the that's the like the hosting thing. The whole but thing. What's the one like? Kamata's seven ninety nine. Yeah, yeah. So full price. It's ridiculous. I mean, the, for you what know, you get for that price, it's you know, we're going on about like, oh my god, MS twenty. It's amazing because it was only seven hundred dollars. This is seven quid. You know, so it's well well worth checking those out. Check it. Check it. So that that pretty much wraps up the entire month. But we do have one little tidbit of uh, information, or two little tidbits uh, of information. Um, firstly, um, just to recap on, um, we spoke about it last month, Minilog Librarian. So just to recap, that is available now. Anybody that's got a Minilog, download this piece of software. Yes, we spoke last month about you can change your patches, you can name them quick, blah, 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 blah. But what it's really good is you get free stuff, you get free sounds with it. 80 free sounds 80 from artists. 80 free yeah. sounds. So it's not just like, you know, Ian, Office, going, this would sound great or whatever. These not are, there's anything wrong with that, of course. Know, that's know, that's Ian a, is a genius, that kind of thing. Mm -hmm. But these are artists that you will know. You know, artists that have had mini logs. And have gone and taken the time to really create some sounds. And this is not just a one off, this is an ongoing thing. So there will be more. There will be more later in the year. Definitely. I'm going to do some. Oh, yeah? I don't know. It'd be cool, though, wouldn't it? Yeah, it would, yeah. I just like the fact that you could have someone on the other side of the world that's doing mini log patches, and it's like you hear a track and go, I love that. And you could just quite easily share that across yeah, the Yeah, I mean, yeah. you that's know, we, we, we've, I mean, we've been doing some videos today that will be up soon. We'll tweet them. But one of the things is is that we've been doing it on the ARP and we've just been doing some tips and, you know, like with an ARP, because it's not preset, is it? It's all manual, it's fully analog. Yeah, fully so analog. There's no patch memories. Yeah, so it's literally like, oh, God, what? I don't know what. I've got to just reset it all, start again. Minilog, it's patches. So you can, like, just instantly scroll and get these hundreds and hundreds of different sounds. Yeah. And that's great. So you're getting these for free. So there's already patches on there. 100, is it? 100 out of the box. Yeah. And then yep. this is another 80, I think, you get with this software. Awesome. It's for free. For free. 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 So how, free. How much is that? Free. 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 I start sounding like you saying the number three. Yeah. One, free. two, three. <laughs> free. Lambskin. <laughs> free. <laughs> Free lambskin. <laughs> there we go. You need to listen to podcast episode one to get that gag. But yeah, so it's free. I mean, you never get anything for free. But not only is it Minilog, because um, Korg tweeted last Friday, or depending when you listen to the podcast, could be two Fridays ago, Freebie Friday, some freebies on PA4X. Oh, I love frisbees. Yep. No freebies. Freebies. Oh, sorry. Yes. Okay. Yeah. Free the bees. They might yep. give away a frisbee, maybe one time. Cog frisbee. That'd be cool, mm. wouldn't it? Yeah. Uh, but no, this is um, PA4X freebies. Can you remember what comes in that, Luke? Yes. Go on then. I'm throwing you right in here. You know, uh, there's some new styles. Yes. In there. Um, I can't remember what sort they are. I think they're like rock styles. To be honest, it doesn't matter what they are. They're free. Free. That's free. free. 
free. <laughs> no, it's just that, it's it's great know. that Korg are actually doing this and actually supporting the. You know, you, you've already got this. Listen, it? it's just I've like had keyboards many years. I've had Korg keyboards. I've had other manufacturers' keyboards. You don't get anything for free. If you do, they're generally a bit naff. You yeah. download them online and they're a bit rubbish, or yeah. you buy them and they're like, I've paid five pound for one style before now. Five English pounds <laughs> for a eight beat. A bossa nova. Yeah, or a you know, this is take on me. <laughs> Someone, I, don't, <laughs> I don't know. I don't know. <laughs> but you know what I mean. You, you but the, that's the thing, the, and they're not like somebody's made them. Obviously, somebody's made them, but <laughs> not what I'm trying to say. When you normally buy a style, they're not made by the brand. Do you know what I mean? They're not yeah, like yeah. Korg styles. It's like some guy sat in a bedroom who's got one who can be very talented or they're not even made on PA4X they're made on another instrument and the MIDI kind of styles do you know what I mean these are brand new brand new styles yeah do you know how much for free free Free. (laughs) that's free you never get anything free I don't know you know that's immense (laughs) just download them even if you're not going to PA4X you might buy one one day Get them downloaded. You can't really do a lot, though, with them if you haven't got a PS. No, no, but I'm so. saying you might buy But you it's might, free. It's free. So, yeah, <laughs> might well. it's, you might decide one day, do you know, I've got all these things on my hard drive now, free, free, <laughs> free, about PA4X. I should just go and buy one. You might just go and buy one. Yeah. Should do. Just to clarify, the PA4X probably free. won't be free. <laughs> it's not free. It's, very it's unlikely. quite a lot of money. Yeah. yeah so. but, but the styles are free. But you get stuff for free, which is cool. Um... So that have we anything else to round out to mention about the month or before we go to close down? Because it's like what time is it? About quarter to two in the it's morning. Was, yeah, it's it's, it's quite way nice past time. bedtime. It was tomorrow, some time ago. Yeah. yeah. No, I think we're. Uh, I think we're there, aren't we? I think yeah, I think so. That's episode cover. two. So, um, obviously, you can follow us at Microcast, M I C R O K A S T, or you can follow me. I have my own Twitter handle now. That is right. Got three followers. No, I haven't, actually. Four? No. Nope. Keep going. <laughs> Swine. 26. This could be a low 26 <laughs> followers. There Listen, we go. I've only been on it about three days. Give oh, me a chance. Bad, We've got this yeah. soon. Um, so, yeah, follow me. Um, I'm Adam Korg UK. Nice and easy. And he's also got one. He's been up longer than me, though. He's had a he's had a bit of a head start. I have, I have twenty seven followers. No, no, so. you've got hundred or something. You've, have I? Yeah, I think wow. so. You have about five months on oh, me. Th- thanks, everyone. And That's you good. just probably just renamed your original personal account to this no, one. No, this is this this brand, is new, brand for new for me. This is, yeah. So uh, obviously, Andy's is Andy Korg UK. It's good. Well, we thought we'd keep it the same to make yeah. it really simple. Didn't uh, we? Luke's it's got one as well, and you're oh Korg Luke, yeah. just to mix it up a bit. So, oh, yeah. Adam Korg UK, Andy Korg UK, and Korg Luke. So, generally, when you follow us, we're always tweeting what we're doing, whether we're in dealers doing videos, whether we're doing um, whatever we're doing. So, check us out. Uh, obviously, I've been retweeting a load of videos about Volkers this week. Um, so, check it out. I find some weird and wonderful videos online from the depths, <laughs> the depths of YouTube. I don't I can, know where you find some of this stuff. Honestly, I just managed to find them. You know, I'm trying to think what else I've did, done. Did you see the... Uh, Volker I, I, FM Streets of Rage. That's oh, what I had oh, to check out. Uh, honestly, cool I've retweeted it. Get on there. I, I found, Get just quickly before there. we go, I found on, um, on, I think it was on Google and I tweeted it, but it was a picture of... Um, like the Korg magazine, but from like 19... 19- I saw that. It was so that good, was, yeah, wasn't yeah, it? Like an, and the, like the, the list amazing of... Amazing products since, oh, there. It's yeah. superb. What a... Yeah. Yeah. So yeah, so check us out. We always... If you've got videos, if you've got ideas, if you've got anything to do with Korg, get in touch because we're keen. We're, we're involved. We like to retweet. We like to speak to people. We like to get involved. We will eventually, probably in the next couple of months, we've been speaking about doing some kind of competition where you guys send us in questions and we have to try and answer them and all that kind of thing. But we will mention that and at any a later suggestions, date. just tweet us and yeah. we'll uh, if you think God, them. you guys are eight boring get someone else in that's fine let us know we can just say no <laughs> you know but yeah just we'd include love your to address hear. and that's fine yeah, yeah. That's gonna, yeah. <laughs> and you'll send a boy's ring <laughs> with his lamb with his skin, lamb skin. <laughs> I don't I, seriously. Okay, you can go and listen to the first podcast. Honestly, and see if you can find I don't know why you pick it up accent. on it. But yeah, I said lamb Andy, skin. these Z fifty five headphones. These are amazing. What are the cups made out of? Big 
big break. C- Lambskin. <laughs> like an lamb skin. Lamb did for an hour and thirty eight minutes last month is take the mick out of my voice. Well, that, no, so it wasn't. I do that all the time. It wasn't just in the podcast. No, well, no, absolutely. But <laughs> I'm saying it was quite funny that you spoke about Beetle Drove. So you know. Anyway, yeah, tune right. in. Go and check that one out as well if you've yeah. not heard So yeah, yet. check us out as well. Uh, BPM, that's where we'll be next month. Yeah. What are the dates? 10th and 11th of September, is that right? That brings about 11th, 11th and 12th. 11th and 12th, and is not Sunday, with us. Monday. Ooh, I'll be there, there on the 12th. Monday. Might be on the 12th. 12th. So yeah, yeah, come and see us. Visit us on the stand. Come and watch Luke do his thing. Yes. Come and speak to me and my Blackburnian voice. Come and speak to Andy and his lamb skin. <laughs> yeah, we'd love to meet you all, uh, and we shall see you next time. See you later. Bye. Goodbye.